today's video is going to be about shooting wide angle and I've got a few ch lenses to choose. Uh, I'm going to be using the Nikon D850 and uh, about four lenses. Welcome, this is Peter Zellums, Adventure Aid, Greeny Flicks, and we're going to be doing a bit of a lens comparison today for the Nikon. I've got four lenses that I'd like to try out, and um, they all have their pros and cons. So starting from the smallest one here, this is a 24mm f2.8. Uh, this one I bought probably about 30 years ago. It's been a great lens. I've been very happy with it. I've got the Tokina 17mm f3.5. That's this one here. Then uh, a more modern lens. We've got the um, Nikkor uh, Autofocus AF. S Nikkor 18 to 35 millimeter f 3.5 to 4.5. So that's uh, also one as a comparison. We'll take these caps off. And then the grand finale. This is the big one, and um, this is a 14 to 24 Nikkor millimeter, 14 to 24 millimeter f 2.8. So this is a fairly fast lens, and it's huge. Um, the lightest one is the 24 2.8, so it's the smallest one and the lightest, coming at 277 grams, then the Tokina at 309 grams, only a little bit larger. This one, the more modern one, the 18-35mm um, is uh, also quite light at 397 grams, so only about 100 grams more than the Tokina. And then this is a really heavy one. This is almost one kilogram, 985 grams. And also large, once you put the lens cap on, you can see the big difference in size. So they all have their pros and cons. Uh, as far as expense are concerned, I would say the, the AIS Nikkor manual focus lens 24 is probably the cheapest. Uh, it does vary in price, but they are similar price, second-hand, similar price to the Tokina, as well as the, um, the Nikkor 24. But the proof of the pudding is, let's see how these are out in the field. Let's go for now. Actually, the borders not haven't opened in Australia yet, but regional travel within New South Wales is allowed. So let's go out into the field and try these lenses out. So I'm looking for a location. Um... It's pretty bright right now, and um, might, I'm not sure what I'm going to take at this stage, but uh, later on as the sun goes down, we've got a, <laughs> there you go, you can get me in the silhouette. Uh, it's a beautiful location, we're in the central coast, about a 90 minutes drive north of Sydney place called Copacabana and McMaster's Beach and this is Co Cochrane Lagoon. Very peaceful this time of day. Might try and take a few shots as a comparison for the different lenses. Just as a starting point and see how we go. Alright, well I found this little um, swing here, so I'm going to try and take a few shots with different lenses. I'll shoot wide open and just let's see what sort of characteristics there are in this lens and the type of results I get. Also try this Nikkor 24mm f2.8. Again, same lighting conditions and let's see how it goes, flare etc. And 
and uh, 1835 f3.5 to 4.5. And finally, the big daddy of all the lenses, uh, the 14 to 24 f2.8. Okay, well that was the first location. Uh, let's go to the next location, which is the beach and the rocks and the surf. Uh, let's see what we can do there and then maybe I ch might choose another location which will be I'm um, thinking will be the night skies we've got a beautiful night sky today so we we'll try and get some stars and the Milky Way let's see how the lenses do in capturing the night skies I think I've got everything all the lenses the bag nothing left behind all right let's see how we go McMaster's Beach, beautiful this time of day. My next location, the rock pool, the rocks. The McMaster's Beach then leads into Copacabana. Well, this is my setup. So using the Tokina 17mm f3.5 and we'll try and take some shots here and maybe a half a second exposure to try and get some movement in the water around the rocks. Oh, getting wet! Right, did I get a shot there? I got some sort of shot. That's good. Let's try that again. Well, it's uh, getting quite dark now. But very picturesque this time of evening. I'm now down to um, shooting about 20 seconds on F16. And let's see how these results turn out. Okay, it's night time and um, I can try and get the Milky Way. Milky Way is really high up so we're going to shoot straight up into the sky, maybe use the trees as branch as some foreground or something. Well, the conclusion from all this is um, the little nickel 24mm f2.8 is excellent value for money. It offers great contrast, it's small, it's lightweight, it's inexpensive and it works with the F mount um, and the Z series um, cameras, Nikon cameras. And. Um, great lens and I should be using more of it I think because it's so compact so that's 24 mil there and obviously if I want a 14 to 24 there you can see the difference between those two lenses the Tokina um, I must admit um, when I bought this lens also about 30 years ago I bought it because I wanted the wide angle lens the, 16, the 17 millimeter but I did notice that um, it wasn't the sharpest lens in the kit Shooting at 3.5, you really notice the detail diminishes towards the edges, so you have to stop it down. Uh, you can still get it, you know, like like any lens, uh, if you understand its limitations. You can still take photographs and you still take get uh, a reasonable result. And I'll show some of these photographs at the end of this video. As you know, the finished ones that have been edited in Lightroom, so which are more than adequate for posting on social media. Uh, if you want to do large prints, well, then you probably want to go for a better lens. 
but as far as the size is concerned, it's um, it's useful. Uh, whether I'll be using it much, I'm not entirely sure. I guess the interesting comparison there was, yes, um, there's the Tokina old lens, manual focus. The option is to go for a newer lens, automatic focus, with the range of 18 to 35, and it's only about 100 grams heavier, so this was about um, 309 grams, and this was about 400 grams. And yes, okay, a little bit of difference in size, but I would have to say the Nikon is a better lens than the Tokina. It's got autofocus and it's sharper. It's just as fast at wide open at 3.5. If you focus down, if you go to 35mm, that's when it goes to 4.5. So it's a slower lens in that sense. But as far as wide angle is concerned, on the 18mm versus 17mm, I would probably prefer the Nikon. It's a newer lens. There you go. So whether the I don't have a 18mm old Nikkor AIS. It'd be interesting to get one of those and compare it and see whether it's a much better lens than this Tokina. Without doubt, the this one here is an incredible lens, which you would expect. It's uh, much more expensive, the most expensive lens out of the the box. Uh, from recollection, second hand was about a thousand dollars Australian for this lens, which is still pretty good for the quality that you get. But it's a big lens, so to travel with this lens, it's not that easy because there's so much weight behind it. If uh, if you have it in the backpack, it can be quite heavy. But if obviously if you're travelling in a car, you're fine with this. Uh, but it was great using it. Uh, it's if you're using a tripod, just make sure the tripod is strong enough to hold the, both the camera body and this lens. Hope you found this uh, video interesting. Um, it's great getting out in the field and doing photographs again. And um, I hope you enjoy some of these photographs that I'll be sharing now at the end of this video. Subscribe, like, see you on the next video. And thanks again for joining me. Cheers.